staring up at the ceiling, floor bound, not bed bound. My, the bed would make me extremely uncomfortable. I had to be on the floor of my own room. Uh, uh, and I was staring up at the ceiling, not uh, basically anticipating my death at, at 18 years old. We're basically a, a walking human experiment right now. It's terrible. It really is bad. Okay, today I'm talking to Eddie. Eddie from Illinois, who uh, has a crazy story and was bedridden at the age of 16. I think we should just take it up from there. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, um, basically it was whenever I was, yeah, 16 years old, freshly 16. It was like two months after my birthday. Um, I was in my chemistry class in my third hour, um, and it was directly after we had gotten out of strength training. So I have, a, I had a strength oh. class and I had, you know, worked out that day. And so I'm like really hot. My heart's racing still cause I'm recovering and I jump, go right to chemistry and I go and sit down and just like usual, this is, this isn't out of the ordinary. I put my head down to like recover and like go to sleep. Really? I, I'm not, I wasn't like the most, uh, responsible student in class, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, so yes, I put my head down to go to sleep in my chemistry class. Uh, so did that. Um, but before I could go to sleep, I never really went to sleep, but I wasn't paying attention to the class. What ended up happening was I felt these butterfly, this butterfly sensation in my stomach. People are familiar with that. You get that when you're anxious, you get that when you're nervous, that that's just what happens. But it was very, very weird. The best way I can describe it is Usually when you feel that sensation, it's appropriate. It's in response to an externality that would make you anxious, that would make you nervous. You know why you're feeling it. This time I was feeling it and it made absolutely no sense, which actually mm. freaked me out, which then caused the feeling to happen more. So it was just this feedback loop. Right. And it was really, really weird. I could feel it brewing this this like panic attack before I knew even what a panic attack was because I'd never experienced one. And I had one in that moment. It, it, it built up and, and I had one. I oh, left wow. the classroom and uh, had no idea what had even happened. Even whenever I had experienced it, I had never experienced a panic attack before. So I didn't know what that was. It was only until later on after I had my parents pick me up that I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's what people are talking about when they say panic attack. It's not just mm -hmm. some dramatic term, you know, like, no, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought it was just some fluke, uh, until it kept happening. Um, I not only had these, these butterflies, what would happen is even without the butterflies, I would have chronic, constant, incessant, like uh, tachycardia. So rapid oh, wow. Rate. Yeah. Uh, and pot symptoms, it would happen. It was basically pot symptoms, but without the blood pressure part, it was just the pulse rate part. If I stood up, it was just a really mm -hmm. rapid pulse rate. Okay. Um, and, and like dizzy, right? Uh, a little bit, but it was mainly okay. once again, just the pulse rate. So it's okay. like, they could say it's pots, but at the same time, that's, that encompasses more broadly like blood pressure symptoms as well, which is where dizziness would come in. Okay. Um, but mine was mainly pulse rate and it was very stressful. It was very scary. Um, I had lots of, I had extreme fatigue a lot of times. Uh, I had digestive issues, uh, discomfort overall. That's really what it was. Uh, but it was almost like debilitating. It was weird. Yeah. Um, and what ended up happening was I had to skip out on, on school, um, a lot. I was missing oh, like wow. every single day almost of school. Um, and I hated it. I didn't like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had to do that. You know, of course, when you're younger, you think it's like it's the one thing you want in the world is just <laughs> not have to go to school. But then right. when it actually has to happen for a reason like this, you're like, no, actually, you take that stuff for granted. So uh, sure, I was everything was getting worse, though. So I was having these symptoms and it was just causing extreme anxiety and then which would actually lead to depression because of how debilitating all of this was. Sure. Um, and my symptoms kept getting worse though. There were more and more and more. Um, the most salient one you could say, the most significant one was the, um, the one that I talk about a lot, which really defined my case, I guess, uh, and mm -hmm. what made my case so debilitating. It's the fact that every single time that I would experience any emotion, uh, didn't matter what type of emotion it was, whether it was a negative one or a positive one. Um, 
it would cause debilitating pain in my rib abdominal cavity and all the way oh, up to wow. my neck and down into my yeah and so i actually couldn't have conversations with people i couldn't talk i couldn't watch uh, tv i couldn't listen to music i couldn't do any of that because um, everything has an emotion connected to it everything and yeah. in fact like even when you're having a conversation with someone you are feeling emotion whether you realize that or not like yeah. whether you're actually conscious of what you're feeling, I mean, it's the entire reason why people enjoy having conversations, <laughs> you know, right. you're, yeah. you're, yeah. And so you never realize that though, until it causes you pain or something like I had to. Yeah. So, um, that was extremely debilitating. Now, of course mm -hmm. I couldn't actually live as a recluse, my entire, you know, young adult sort of, uh, life. Um, sure. And so I had to continue going to school. I had to keep trying. I had to get a job and, and go to work later on. Uh, but the one reason why I was pushing myself so hard, because that's what I was doing. I was pushing myself really hard. Mm -hmm. And it was because of two reasons. Number one, I was inculcated as a child with a good work ethic. Like it, okay. was, it was one of those things where sure. you work if you're able-bodied because mm -hmm. you're supposed to be a productive member of society. <laughs> right. Um, and it was also, though, because of the fact that whenever I opened up about these symptoms and everything, uh, a lot of my friends, well, most of my friends, they took it at face value. They believed me because I wasn't a dramatic person to them. I didn't like just come up with things and, mm -hmm. you know, just to get out of things, to evade right. situations. But it was a lot of my family, uh, actually, that basically, uh, to, use a, to use a Gen Z term, gaslit me. Uh, oh wow! The, yeah, that they believe they they told me they told me that I was basically making things up. Um, oh, they got no. to that point. I was making things up. Um, it was just anxiety, and one of my family members had actually said to me that um, it's anxiety, and he's dealt with this before. Which, listen, I mean, that's that's some arrogance right there. I right, think. sure. Um, but if anyone that is watching this understands how it is to be disabled and have people talk to you like that. They'll understand that when you are told that no matter how much, you know, that that's not true, you start to believe it anyway. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, totally. It's, it's a manipulative, it's a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, I just felt ashamed in general for not working. Like it was Aww. like something like, it was like, I'm not doing anything. I need to do something. Or else mm -hmm. I'm not going to feel like I'm being productive and and even no matter how well of an excuse I have, no matter how good of an excuse, right? It's, it's not I'm not going to feel good. Now is that rational? And uh, no, it, it, it's not. But <laughs> no. <laughs> that's uh that's how I was thinking. And so I pushed myself. I got a job during the COVID lockdowns. Actually, when everyone was getting shut down, I got a job. Um, wow, I got a job. What did you do? Well, uh, I worked for I worked as a Fresh Cap Two member for Walmart. Actually, in the area. <laughs> Was um, fresh like you're in the vegetable section? I was yeah, I was in the produce section. Yes. Oh, okay. I was in the produce and meat section, but I worked okay. in the back of the store a lot of times. So actually okay. a lot of people may think that Walmart is a pretty leisurely sinecure sort of like just a leisurely job. Uh I'm and sure it can be. So. It can okay. be, but okay. in, in the warehouse area, mm -hmm. for me, especially at that state at that condition, yeah. It was not I was I was lifting, I, I was, you know doing a lot of heavy lifting um yeah very frequently in the back and i was working in some cases at like i, I think it may have been zero degree fahrenheit temperatures oh the, no uh, in the freezers yeah yeah which i mean that didn't really affect my condition that much but it was just it, it's just to g give a picture as to like how arduous it was for me to do the job sure. in my condition as, it, as someone that had extreme tachycardia no matter what like just 24 7 and had extreme pain experiencing any emotion whatsoever like at all it's so um, crazy yeah yeah so eventually you know i get i get past walmart and i actually go to target because it paid better and okay. it was actually less strenuous except the okay. damage had already been done because i had worn mm -hmm. myself down more mm -hmm. and more Mm -hmm. And, um, well, basically long story short, uh, in January of 2022, that's when everything went downhill at this point, I hadn't, I don't know what was going on with me. No yeah. doctors had told me anything of value that one doctor said that, uh, um, when he did a, I don't know, it was a neurology test or something on me. Um, he said that the only thing that I had wrong with me was that I had slight neuropathy in my elbow, and I need to gain weight. 
Oh, wow. For insulation around the nerve or something, which was just how helpful. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, okay, so you're telling me to gain five pounds of fat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, but there was, there was that. And then I had, uh, at this point I had a, a scope done, a, a barium swallow and, and, uh, and a scope done on my esophagus and my stomach to see if there were any polyps or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I have, I went to the hospital for the palpitations. I had done everything in my power at this point. Okay. And I idea what was going on with me. So this entire time I've been looking into things and I hadn't found anything. I had looked into diet at this point, which is sort of the beginning of my journey towards this area, but yeah. nothing was completely ameliorating the condition. And so sure. in January of 2022, I was at my mom's house and I was walking to the bathroom when I turned my head. Uh, I don't know why I was just turning my head, you know, I was maneuvering yeah. through the kitchen and yeah. I my vision completely blacked for about two full seconds. Oh no. I had no idea what that was. It jump scared me basically, it's which sure. also shot pain into my stomach because that's an mm -hmm. emotion. So I was actually that moment I went to the bathroom and like, I went onto the floor, like I shut the door and went onto mm -hmm. the floor and I was like trying to recover. Cause every time that you get that stomach drop feeling heart would start racing even more and pounding. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to recover from that. And it freaked me out. I actually went on leave for work for two weeks and I thought, okay, I just need two weeks and then I can go back to work, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, that didn't happen. I actually regressed even further during that time. And that will make more sense when I explain to you exactly what is going on with me. Sure. Um, and did a doctor finally figure this out? Yes, but oh, I okay. found a doctor first and it was in Florida. So 14 oh, okay. hours away, 14 drive away, 14 okay. hours drive away. Basically during that time, I couldn't make my own food. I couldn't see my friends. I couldn't see any family member at all. And also I was having nights where I would, st one in particular that I can think of, I stayed up for 40 hours uh, mm -hmm. straight because, and the only reason I went to sleep was actually because we went to the hospital and they shot me up with Ativan. Oh, and, wow. Uh, the Ativan actually almost didn't put me to sleep. They couldn't oh, wow. believe it because that's supposed to knock you out and it didn't. Sure. Um. I couldn't go to sleep and it was because every time that I would lie down, I was, every time you get into that sort of lucid dream state where you're mm -hmm. in, you're in on the line between awake and asleep, yeah. um, your breathing slows down and your muscles relax more. And for some reason, every single time that would happen, my body would sink in and then I'd gasp for air. Like I wasn't being, I wasn't able to breathe, mm -hmm. but it would happen it, like all the time after 24 hours of not being able to go to sleep, I still wasn't able to do it no matter how exhausted I was. Mm -hmm. Well, basically the month of February, my, my father was the one making me food every single day that he would come home from work. I couldn't eat. And I was basically just staring up at the ceiling floor bound, not bed bound. My, the bed would make me extremely uncomfortable. I had to be on the floor of my own room. Uh, uh -huh. and I was staring up at the ceiling, not uh, basically anticipating my death at, at 18 years old at this point. Oh my God. 17, 18. That's, so, that's terrible. Yeah. And I've never been the woe is me type, but that was like my, that was my, uh, <laughs> that was the biggest test for me on that. Sure. I was like, why is this, why is this happening? You yeah. know, as, as I see everyone around me, like living their lives. So I continue to study and review and all do all this stuff and basically research into what is going on with me. And I found this condition called craniocervical instability, CCI. Yeah. And Basically, it's a condition characterized by a weakening or, or a loosening, let's say, um, a weakness of the ligaments within your cervical spine leading up to the cranium. Okay. And the ligaments are just what hold bone to bone. So right. if they're weak, the bones don't really do that as well as they should. And so they sure. move around a little too much. And it only takes a few millimeters for some people for that to be extremely debilitating because if the bones move around too much, they start impinging on the surrounding nerves and arteries. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're talking about your neck, that's an extreme issue. You've got your sure. front nerves that go down to your diaphragm. Uh, yeah. So that affects your breathing, your vagus nerves, which are, I mean, this right in your important. stomach. Yep. They're right in your yeah. stomach. Exactly why I, I saw these videos about it from, from a YouTube page called uh, Caring Medical Florida. Okay. And oh. it's, yeah. And, uh, I, I was looking at all these videos, like they did these seminars on Vegas, uh, 
vagus neuropathy, basically, okay. uh, which they call vagopathy. And I was I was looking at this and I was so convinced that this was what I had that I actually uh, requested to be a patient. Like I, I put all my information in and they were I got a call back from them, the clinic, and they were willing to see me. So I told my dad about it. And fortunately, my grandmother, uh, my maternal grandmother, yeah. actually lived an hour and a half away from the clinic. So we did have a place to stay. Oh, OK. We drove there on August 6th, um, one day straight through, went there, and I had my first appointment, or at least my assessment with them on August 8th, and not only did they look at me, they, they, they looked at my neck, and they yeah. did all their diagnostic testing, um, which is very unorthodox testing that they did. It's, it's okay. high tech, you know, they're a private clinic, and okay. that helped a lot, actually. Sure. Well, the main doctor there um, said, and he, I'll get into him in a minute and the therapy that he employs, but he actually told me, he said, and I'll never forget it because how could I forget this? He said that if I had come any later, then I was on my way for something catastrophic. Now, oh, wow. they, got, they have to be a little anodyne when they talk because they're doctors, but that's doctor talk for, well, You're you know sure. what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. And, and I'm 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 18 years old listening to this and I'm like, wow. It's surreal because it's like, did I save my own life by like finding you guys at this point in my life? Like, yeah, well, this clinic actually, basically what they had, they had shown later on, I'm going to be a little out of order because actually, believe it or not, that's going to make the story a little more orderly. Okay. Throughout my entire time getting treated at this clinic, they discovered that I did not only have this condition in my neck. They said that I was in the top 10% of the cases they'd ever seen. And they see people from all across the world because no one really does this therapy. Okay. Uh, they see thousands and thousands of people. They said I'm in the top 10% of their cases. But that's just with my neck. They actually, over the course of treatment, um, told me that I have the condition everywhere in my body. There's not one ligament that is not a pro like um, experiencing this and hasn't oh, sustained wow. this issue. Um that is why, though, that I had all of this pain around my rib cage because the ligaments that tighten your ribs mm -hmm. to your to your thoracic spine, yeah, were extremely loose. Um, and mm -hmm. why would that cause pain when I'm experiencing emotion? Well, every time that you ha when we talk about that butterfly sensation, that is an yeah. actual physical feeling where your diaphragm yeah. contracts and whatever. Okay. Well, your bones are supposed to stay still when that happens and they weren't. So every single time that I would experience an emotion, everything moved and it would impinge on the nerves around there. And this is oh where your, all of this is where your fight or flight nerves are. Right. Your thoracic spine. Yeah. Um, in fact, I mean, if you move it a little bit, that's where epinephrine and uh, like adrenaline and all that stuff is released. That's how it's okay. how the release is stimulated. And so I'm like, okay, um, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, Basically, the treatment that they employ, though, is a completely regenerative treatment. I will make a full recovery at some point, even if it takes oh, a few years. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, it is what people may have heard of as PRP or prolotherapy. Okay. Um, it is, those are two different things, but they, they're they very similar. Uh, prolotherapy is a solution of basically dextrose, so sugar, okay. um, water, a plant compound that promotes inflammation, leave it to plants to do that. And also, right. yeah, and <laughs> also I think a slight numbing agent, but I'm not sure. Um, but basically what they do is they inject it in between the bones in your ligaments. This is not a fun, this is not a fun procedure. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, and they inject the fluid in there and it launches an immune response on the ligaments because ligaments do not undergo, they don't have good blood flow. It's one of the reasons why they're white and muscles have really good blood flows, why they're mm -hmm. red in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for an inflammatory cascade to be launched on a ligament is actually pretty rare, uh, at least okay. for one to actually lead to a full amelioration of whatever damage was incurred by that ligament in, in a case of an injury or something like that. Yeah. Um, so they actually launch, they force the body to like launch its own inflammation process on it. And we know that inflammation is what heals injury. So they will get the body to heal it itself, which is mm. one of the reasons why it's a safe procedure because okay. it's not, it's not like uh, corticosteroids where you put it in and it just reduces the pain. Sure. And you continue to just damage it, damage the. Yeah. Um, so we did this, um, this clinic though injects up to a hundred or more of these injections at once in one okay. session. 
other clinics don't do that. They do like one or two, okay. which is, I think, one of the reasons why PRP is not known as like extremely revolutionary yet, because okay. they do tests on like one or two and it, it you know, it's not going to have the best effect, I don't think. But okay. I've been getting this done ever since April of 2022, uh, off and on. I stayed for months in Florida, then would come home for a little bit. Now okay. I'm home most of the time and Great. I have started up a channel with that basically involves me being a talking head for all the information that I learned down the road mm -hmm. um, on this stuff uh, to try and raise enough money to, I mean, it sounds like a daunting task, but I always dream big, um, which right. is one of the reasons why I'm here right now. Uh, I am trying to raise enough money to actually with, with my girlfriend that I'm living with to um, move down there so that I have oh, okay. to the clinic because travel fees are not cheap. <laughs> so, no. yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is I do have, I do have help from my uh, grandma that I was living with. She is extremely wealthy. And so she was able to pay for these treatments. Oh, these, wow. These treatments. Oh, that's, that's in very lucky. <laughs> in yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't imagine. We talk about it all the time. I can't imagine what someone would do if they didn't like, if they were in my shoes, but they didn't have anyone that had, that could have that much support or give that much support. Yeah. We, in my treatment, uh, total in terms of like how much has been spent already yeah. has been over a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my goodness. And it's not covered by insurance unless you file the claims yourself. And then you have to go through, you know, the, the health coverage institutes known as insurance companies, which sure. is always fun. Sure. Um, but yeah, while I was, while I was staying there in Florida, I was still bed bound. I was still uh, debilitated and these treatments, it's not like uh, it was a linear process. I would get yeah. worse before I got better. So it was even worse at points. Okay. But during that time, I just studied, 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 studied all the stuff that uh, I got into uh, whenever I thought it was really due to diet, what was going on, which I yeah. think somewhat whenever in my developmental years, but that wasn't the root issue at the moment. It was actually a structural condition, but yeah. I was looking into how diet affected chronic uh, diseases and either caused them or how diet could help them. And then it led me into discovering, you know, a lot of people first, it was the wrong people, Dr. Gundry, yeah. uh, Dr. Or, uh, sorry, not Dr. Dave Asprey, just Dave Asprey. Okay. Um, and then Paul Saladino, that seems to be a common thing where people find him first before they find actual carnivore. Uh, and then Bar uh, yeah. Mark K found okay. August 14th of 2022. I remember the exact day that I discovered him. Oh, nice. And then during that time, I was just writing like research paper after research paper on stuff that I had learned because uh, what else was I going to do? I'm not one of those people. Once again, it goes back to me being inculcated with a good work ethic. I'm not one of those people that want to play video games all the time. Even again, even if I have a good reason to, I was like, I'd rather do something productive. So I learned right. all of that stuff. And then I decided I looked at my catalog of research papers and I said, you know what? I have so much information here that I've been sharing with my friends and family, telling sure. them to read it. I was like, why don't I just aggregate all of it into a book? That's a good idea. Yeah. And <laughs> my girlfriend, who was just my friend at the time, I, was, I, yeah. said, I said that to her and I sort of laughed when I said it. And she laughed too, because she didn't really, I mean, it's, it's not her fault. No one really would believe like you just said it in passing. Like you're like, they didn't believe that I was actually going to do it that night that I said it, I went out to an extreme, I went out to the office that my grandma has over at her uh, place. And um, so I went onto the really old iMac that she has. It's like a really thick thing. And <laughs> yeah. I, I, I grabbed the, I went onto the like decade and a half old word program on there. <laughs> and I wrote my prologue that night actually. And, oh, wow. uh, and I sent the video, uh, I sent a picture of it to her and I said, I said, look, she goes, oh my God, you're actually writing a book. And I wrote that thing in two weeks. I sat wow. there, I sat there for 16 hours a day, probably. And I wrote the whole thing in about two weeks. Oh, wow. And That's crazy. And all your research is kind of what led you to carnivore, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And Bar Barquet was the catalyst for it. Okay. I was already trending towards that uh, already though. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. How did that, uh, has that helped your situation? Definitely. It, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. And I could tell even when I started doing it, I ate a lot more than I do now. And I was 15 pounds less than I am now. So I'm 150 pounds now, which is okay. still pretty like light. Um, okay. how tall are you? I am. I'm five eleven. Oh yeah. That's kind of light. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're kind of tall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 
basically back then though, I was 135. Oh, wow. I was underweight. Um, yeah. but what was happening is I trained, I went over to the strict, like actual carnivore diet, yeah. not the fruit and honey thing, because whenever okay, I was fruit and honey, uh, I did gain eight pounds when I dropped sure. the fruit. I was, and I, I, it's not like I was obese or overweight, obviously, sure. but, yeah. um, when I dropped the fruit, I lost eight pounds. Okay. And I thought that was actually, that's probably a good thing. Even though I'm still underweight, I need to gain weight in the proper forms, not the stuff right. that I was probably holding on to, which was quite a bit of water, uh, from inflammation and, right. uh, some fat maybe, <laughs> you know, that wasn't yeah. supposed to be on there. But whenever I was doing that, I was eating two steaks, a pound of ground beef, four eggs, and two sticks of butter all in one day, I think. Wow. Um, and I was just maintaining 135 pounds. And so like I was I was maintaining wow. and I was not um I, I was not moving. I could not move. I was sitting down <laughs> or or yeah. lying down. Uh and yeah. so I was doing that for week months, actually. Um okay. that's what I was doing. And it did make me feel better. I did not have the 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 sweats that I would have whenever I ate uh, post meal after I'd eat fruit and honey mm -hmm. with my meat, which people call yeah. the meat sweats. And it's like, what is it? <laughs> is it the meat sweats or is it the fruit and honey sweats or the carb yeah. sweats? Yeah, right? exactly. You, know, you, you cut the meat out. You won't have the sweats. You cut the carbs out. You also won't. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Seems to be a situation going on there where you if you mix them together hint hint then you might have yeah. that issue but uh i didn't have that anymore uh the acne that i had on my face cleared up i had had acne on my face for years and even though i was undergoing extremely inflammatory treatments all that on my face went away um oh, wow. and on my back i had it on i had it on my back like my upper shoulders mm -hmm. which is a, a typical teenage thing sure uh, yeah but I didn't like it and it wasn't comfortable, but right. the fact that it went away completely and it's never come back is pretty telling. Yeah. Um, it made my pulse rate go down actually quite a bit. Uh, it was still higher because of my condition. I wasn't fully to where I am right now, which is still okay. not fully healed. Uh, right. I still can't hold a regular job, but I can actually sit in a chair and talk to people, you know, and work oh, out yeah. finally able to work oh, out again. Yeah. That's really, great. Yeah. So that was happening. And then eventually um, I was putting on more weight. Finally, I actually, I knew that that, that was needed, but I knew that my body was using the stuff for repair actually for right. the first few months. Sure. Um, yeah. Then I started taking stem enhance ultra from the Cerul company in October of 2022. Okay. Hey, and you talk about that on your channel. Yeah. 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 That actually, I, I'm straight, like I'm straightforward and honest when I talk about the products, the stem enhance ultra product, I did not see an immediate difference with, be, but I can't say it wasn't because, or that it was because it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. I was undergoing extremely strenuous treatment. I was also changing my diet completely. That was still right. soon after I had changed, I had changed it on my birthday in August. So okay. it'll be three years now, uh, this month that I've been on it. Um, okay. I think two, three. Anyway, either way. <laughs> um, okay. And so I don't say straightforward like, oh, that that like changed, that's flipped everything around. What I will say is that whenever I, th it was this year, this year, maybe a little bit of last year, but it was definitely this year. I started taking the Cyactive products from Cerul as well. All of them. What's the, Cyactive? All, Cyactive, uh, you have the Cyactive regular formula that's based on spirulina. They basically constantly oh, they okay. have this, uh, yeah, they have this formula um, that is based around spirulina that's filtered and then activated. And they have multiple formulas that are based around that formula. So they okay. have the regular Cyactive, then they have Cyactive joint, uh, then they have uh, collagen active, and then they have Hydraactive, which is an electrolyte one. Okay. I so actually you taking all of those. I started taking all of them oh, uh, okay. because you actually cannot take too much of the Cyactive. It, it, it doesn't. It's not. These supplements aren't like other ones where you can actually have an overdose of like calcium or potassium or something like that. Okay. It just gets to a point where it won't have an, a further effect if you take above a certain amount. Okay. Well, within, I think one day actually, I felt all of this that is still extant to some degree or at least yeah. one completely start to deflate just just go away every oh, wow. all of it go away and i'd never had a response like that before that oh, was wow. like that. now at first i was a little hesitant to continue taking them because inflammation occurs for a reason so why would i shut it down 
Yeah. Right? Except the way that this works, it's similar to ibuprofen. And I know how ibuprofen works, uh, which can have some issues, especially with its active ingredient. But it does, to sum it up, I can get into the granular details if you'd like, but it, it basically does all the good things that ibuprofen does, but without the bad things. Okay. <laughs> and oh, I was okay. like, okay, interesting. I'm going to keep taking this and I'm going to induce injury with, uh, well, not quote unquote, it, you induce slight injury when you work out. I was like, I'm going to see that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to see if I don't see muscle growth, because if I don't see muscle growth, then that would tell me that, cause I know I'm employing the right stimulus. Yeah. That these are, are mitigating the inflammation too much because okay. the inflammation is what causes the muscle growth in the first place. Well, yeah. I've been putting on muscle. I put on six pounds in a short amount of time. So, oh, wow. I continue taking them and yeah. for someone with a chronic condition, a systemic inflammatory condition like that, I think that they could, I don't think that there's, I think that they should be taking them, but that's sure. not, I'm not using this as an outlet to just, yeah, buy my products, give me money. Yeah. But I'm yeah. just saying that, that was my experience with taking okay. the products. So I take the products. I, I eat pretty strict carnivore. I stay under 20 grams of carbs. Okay. I do stay under, I'm not completely zero carb, which is funny. If people watch my videos, you may think that I'm like zero carb always. Um, sure. I just yeah. don't pretend like it's completely. So like how, like what do you eat now? What's your like general idea of what you eat? Yeah. So it's still, of course, mainly red meat and it's grass fed. Um, okay. Grass fed ground beef is mainly what I eat. Uh, okay. I have grass fed butter to a, some degree with it. Um, I have eggs uh, pastured because they're from local farms here. Okay. Uh, and I have, what are the other main things? That I have some, pa I do have the conventional pasteurized cheese that I have with my with my eggs just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm trying to get raw cheese from a local farmer around okay. here as soon as possible, though. That is something yeah. that I'm trying to do. Because um, dairy is, first of all, dairy is addicting. If in a perfect oh, world, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it at all. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to wean myself off of that. Yeah, um, I understand. Yeah, but... That I, I do still have it though with my eggs. I seem to get more eggs down if I have the cheese in with it. Well, yeah. Doc, if it's a, if you're gonna have you know something addictive with it. Um, yeah. And then I only drink water. Um, once in a while, I do have some. My girlfriend will buy some pepperoni for herself, okay. and I'll have some of that. Um, okay. I try to stay away from it uh, because of the poofa content, actually, and What's also the poofa? fact that it's uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The polyunsaturates in it. I'm not, a, I'm kind of hesitant to, you know, indulge on that stuff for that sure. reason. I'm not going to pretend like I don't because there's yeah. times where I do. And also it seems like you cannot get a proper satiety signal from eating those foods as you do mm -hmm. from eating regular, like, like actual grass fed ruminant animal meat. I don't know sure. why. I don't know what it is. Um, and also since it's more industrial, um, there is more stuff in there, like yeah. regular American cheese, for example, is industrial. And if you put them under a microscope, which we've done here, okay, you see the microplastics in it, it's not hard. Oh, you, no. you immediately see it all. Ew. And so I'm like, mm, pepperoni probably has it too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially with what pork is fed. So, yeah. you know, anyway, I do have some of that. And then in terms of what the, what I eat in terms of like the carbs, uh, yeah. I don't keep any here. That's the problem. It's whenever I go to other, thing. I am at someone else's house and they've mm -hmm. got something and I'm like, I, listen, I am someone that since I have a chronic, con, like a, a, a debilitating condition and I know what I, I know what I know now. Yeah. I do not have the ability mentally to actually like splurge on carbs. Okay. That's something that I do. I do have, it's just this ingrained thing where I will not go over a certain amount. Okay. However, I do go over zero, which I don't like that I do. I will <laughs> have some, and it's not on the good stuff. I mean, like my it's mom. Not like an avocado or a pickle? <laughs> no, no. That, if anything, that would be much better. I'd feel less guilty about it. But my mom will have like, uh, you know, because because my brother, he's, he's, he's 11 now, I think. Okay. And he eats the typical, he ate what he eats, what I ate whenever I was 11 sure. and I won't go for like cereal or pop tarts that are in the house. But if there's those really mini snack size, like Snickers, I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> that's on the <laughs> counter. <laughs> let me, let me yeah. take that. And then I, I'm like, why am I doing that? Why? And this How is why do I don't feel, keep it in the house. 
Like, yeah, exactly. I always say, like, when I talk about the carnivore diet, like, just get garbage back and get get all the stuff out of your house. Yes. Like, yes. Because it's just too tempting. Um, yeah. Do you feel after you eat that Snickers bar or something that's off, do you feel physically bad? Like, does it flare something up in your condition? Yes, it actually. Um, I mean, association doesn't equal causation, but uh, it's been regularly every single time I do it. Um, <laughs> I have. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I yeah I have the nerve pain around my ribs act up. Yeah. Um. I have my I get warmer, which a lot of people have talked about. That's one of the reasons that they have carbs in their diet. I've heard this before because they get a, they feel a little colder on a regular carnivore diet. And I tell them, well, okay, so heat is a side effect of inflammation in many cases. You, okay. You'll feel heat when you're inflamed. Sure. So. I don't think I'm feeling heat because I need the carbs. Uh, I think it's yeah. because I'm a little inflamed now that I just ate that. Yeah. Um, my if I eat enough, there have last year during Christmas when all of the carbs are all, are all around you. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, that's enough, rough. I went up to about fifty or sixty grams at one point. Okay. That was when I had elevated blood pressure every time. That was when okay. I started to actually get like, and you could you can get like you can feel it in your neck. When it yeah. happens, like your blood pressure is elevated and like my face is red and I'm like, oh, wow. Now, um, that ha yeah, I, I, that happens too. Whenever I have carbs in the slight amount that I do now, it is mostly just the nerve pain and I do feel warmer. But I will mm -hmm. say that it may very well be the case that um, I have emotional dysregulation. I get more angry. Like I'm just like on edge more. Uh, that, that, that's it's been, the sugar. I think, I think so. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the sugar. I think, yeah. Look, like when you're a kid and you eat like a bunch of junk food, you're like bouncing off the walls. It's yeah, sugar. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's that. And then also I, th I think people have talked about like Red 40, like the petroleum-based food oh, diet that are okay, another thing yeah. where they get like really erratic and like they, yeah. I've, I've heard, heard that heard very that. bad. Yeah. Um, do you, I mean, we touched, you touched on this for like a second, um, but do you think that how you were eating as a child affected or created this situation in your body? Yes, actually. Okay. Um, whenever I was growing up, I didn't eat. Let me put it this way. My first hamburger, which was basically my first amount of beef that I'd ever really eaten, was at 10 or 11 years old uh, at oh, wow. a Mexican restaurant. So they were not in the business of selling American food. It was just because I didn't want all the other food. I was a really yeah. picky eater. Um and I had like one or two bites. Uh, okay. That was, that's what we're dealing with here. Like when it when it comes to the amount of meat that I ate, yeah, I would have some in the form of slight amounts of chicken breast in a bowl of rice. So how much was I absorbing of certain things? I have no right. idea. If you just combine it with a bunch of phytate, like yeah, and then things like a hot dog with mac and cheese. Whenever I was younger, like that was that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, I was, I was dealing with, I never, you never realize that when you're a kid, you're like, I'm right. just eating food in front of me. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm it's food. Food is food is food. Right. Apparently. Yeah. You know. Right. And, yeah. um, I think it's crucial to have, you know, protein in your developmental ages. Yes. Here's the thing about ligaments. They're made of collagen, which is the most prominent right. protein in the body. Well, where do you get collagen from? I mean, yeah, your body can synthesize collagen from certain protein like or certain amino acids you can get from plants, however much of those you're absorbing, right? But yeah. also you get you get collagen directly in its already active form in meat and animal right. products. And oh. I never I never got any of that. Now, there is some discrepancy here because there are many children thousands, hundreds of thousands that have grown right. up eating the same things that I have. So it okay. can't just be that this will invariably sure. always cause a thing. What right. my theory is, is that I have given my genetic predisposition to certain things because mm -hmm. everyone has a genetic predisposition to certain things. They're born with certain right. genes. Um, I was more predisposed to developing this condition given the same stimulus as other people. I think okay. that's what it is. Okay. Um, a lot of people would like to say, well, if, if it's genetic, if your condition is genetic, then there's nothing you could have done to change the outcome. That's not yeah. necessarily true because yeah. of the fact that people forget that genes are only in the business, so to speak, of encoding for the production of a certain protein and nothing else, which means that they can either be downregulated, upregulated, or somewhere in between in terms of their activity level, in terms of the production of that protein. So sure. you can impose they basically adapt to the environment in which you place them. Part of that environment being your diet. So if your right. diet is something that is bereft of things like collagen that could stimulate 
certain genes that you do have innately to either produce a protein or not produce a protein that is involved in, let's say, collagen synthesis. But right. you have to be someone that has those genes already. But it doesn't mean that if you have the genes that you will necessarily develop the condition because that depends on what you do. It's it's kind of it's a little convoluted a little bit, but I I, mean, I get what you're saying though. Yeah, uh, it's simply you either are predisposed to something physically or you're not. Right. And if you uh, put yourself in a position to be more predisposed to it, you're going to uh, receive it or you're not. Like exactly. Yeah. I ate like very bad as a kid. I ate half dogs of French fries, also, yep. and I experienced my own difficulties. But um, growing up different than you, but I don't mm -hmm. also feel like I didn't have to experience those things. So yeah, it's like, it's like some people are predisposed to developing diabetes, but at the end of the right. day, they're not consuming carbohydrates. They're not going to do it. But if you give, right. if you give someone that has the genes that make them more predisposed to developing type two diabetes versus someone that doesn't have those genes and you give them the same bolus of carbohydrates, this right. one might have a higher glucose response than this one. The one that has the more predisposed to, to developing diabetes. But if you don't give them the carbs, then they're not going to develop it because there's no reason for them to develop it. Right. It's like that's that's exactly. basically what I mean exactly. about like my story, first of all, because I know, sure. like I said, I try and keep it short and then it ends up not being short because my story is so <laughs> lengthy. Um, I put my entire story in my book. I do have yeah. a I do have a video on my channel. It's my channel trailer. So as soon as you go on the channel page, which you can just look up Edward Goki, uh, G-O-E-K-E -E is how you spell that. Um in YouTube and you'll find the channel. As soon yeah. as you click on it, the channel trailer will be up and it will give a sort of quick synopsis of my story um, as well. But if you want the full one, it is in my book. Um, Contraindicated is the book title. It's on Amazon uh, paperback. Contraindicated. Yes. Mm -hmm. If people want to buy that, they can go there. If you want to subscribe to my channel, they can go to that. The I'll put channel. the link in the yeah. description also. Yep. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's really all I have to say because, I mean, most of the time, my videos online, yep, they're really contentious, but I try and make them <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're entertaining. More kids are, I mean, I, I say kids, it's it's young adults now. My yeah. generation in general is just yeah. coming down with more cancer rates, uh, which wasn't a shock when that came out. I was like, yeah, what a shock. Yeah. Not because of the fact that, you know, all of these different things and yeah. and no one takes it seriously because first of all we're not really taught to take it seriously again right i mean i know exactly what my generation's taught because i'm in the generation i went to public school okay yeah. no one teaches that um yeah. the, the other thing is if they do it's all the wrong information because of what we've been told mm -hmm. and that that's all the trite stuff but the, the, the other thing is that you know in our day and age like we're really hedonic I think yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you don't really care about the future. It's like, I don't really associate with anyone in my generation anymore. Uh, oh, okay. Because I can't <laughs> hand. I'm you can't well, deal with the instant pleasure of everything. Uh, yeah. No matter the ramifications. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll try, I'll try and talk to someone about something serious, like just yeah. anything serious. It doesn't have to be diet related. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like, you can see them in live time zone out and go, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, are you in one ear out the other? Huh? Like I'm trying yeah. to tell you something that is going to be important for you when you're 30 or something. Yeah. You know, like I, at first I was like, well, maybe I'm just like really way more. I've just like had more expeditious uh, maturation compared to these other people. And I was like, maybe, but, and I tried to like be humble about it. Cause I'm like, well, maybe sure. cause I went through a lot of stuff. Yeah. But, um, my girlfriend never went through that stuff and she takes things seriously and I compare yeah. her to other people and I'm like, what's going on? Like, yeah. I, I just, it's, it just feels like, yeah, it's just, um, social media, bury your face in a phone, right. get whatever you, I mean, yeah. Instant, again, instant okay. gratification, whatever's in front yeah. of you, you eat or you consume, uh, yeah. and by consume. Yeah. That doesn't just mean food. That means right. entertainment, everything. It's just right. all that. And don't think about the future at all. And then if you try and teach someone how to, how to care for the future, uh, their attention span is now two seconds long because Thanks of being, TikTok. <laughs> being TikTok and stuff yeah. that they can't do it. They're addicted to no. their phones. It's like, crazy. It's so crazy. also people are, who are not ready to receive help won't, won't receive it. Like they're not ready for change. They're not going to get it. Horses so. and water right there. I yeah. mean, that's all that is. I've tried. I've done that before. I, I've, <laughs> that again goes for things other than diet too. But yes, especially yeah. relevant to diet. If they, if they don't have any problems already as well, I mean, right. 
they're not going to change it. Like if I had yeah. known, here's the thing. If I had known that my condition was not relevant to diet per se, I already talked about how I think it was in terms of why I developed it, but in terms of what yeah. would fix it, you right. know, diet won't fix that. I've already gotten to this point where I need a, external treatment. Mm -hmm. If I had known that, I still would have been a person to prioritize diet if I had found the answer as to what is indicated to consume. Sure. Other people are not like that though. I've noticed sure. they, if, if they, if they find, if they have any excuse, if they can find any excuse to continue, continue eating the ice cream, they'll do it. Right. And right. you know, part of that, I try and be extremely forgiving because of the fact that we know that addiction is a little different than just being lazy or something. Totally. Um, it's, yeah. it's a natural psychological right. thing. Yeah, but there are some people that just have that mentality with everything outside of addiction, uh, of things that are addictive. And so, you know, that, you know, even if you weren't addicted, you probably still wouldn't stop. And so I've just get, I give up on those people. I mean, I don't like fully, fully give up. I, I always say, hey, I'm available if you want to talk to me. Sure. But I'm not going to, you know, fatigue myself. Right. I'm trying to help you. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> Like you said, first of all, there's not enough people in my generation that have the gumption or the impetus to do anything really, but right. like actually learn things and then get the message out there to to learn anything, to get sure. knowledge in their head because knowledge is power. And honestly, the fact that we have such this 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 destitution of knowledge in my generation is like dangerous. It is actually yeah. dangerous. I yeah. view it as a responsibility to learn stuff in order to not put other people in danger. Actually, sure. in a way, like yeah. like you need to have these you need to have the information out there and you need to learn it. Yeah. I chose a certain niche to learn and now I want to get the information out there. But what I've noticed is all of the people that are putting the information that actually do have the impetus to put information out there. I was like, Oh my gosh. I mean, you do even just the, the most cursory assessment of, of information out there. And you realize that's so wrong. But, yeah, but you just you just got five thousand likes on this reel, like like five thousand people just looked at this and went, "Yep, yeah." <laughs> five thousand of the two second attention span people just said, "Oh well," that, and now I'm going to take that as 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 truth as as yeah. sacrosanct. Now, like that's yeah. just how it is. And I was like, "No, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm I'm going to compete with these with this short form dopaminergic content, and so I'll do the cuts and I'll do all that stuff." But I'm going to make sure that it's the most responsible information that I'm getting out there. And it's also yeah. in a funny way. Because why, why yeah. wouldn't you do it in a funny way? You have to. We need some humor. <laughs> yeah. You have to. Yeah. And also, I have to try and enjoy my job. <laughs> yeah, I don't exactly. want to actually like go there and be like, you know, get on camera and be like, hey, yeah, we're going to react to this guy. And I'm going to hate this entire hour. Like, no, yeah. no I want to have fun with it. Like, I actually yeah, want to be like. And, <laughs> My humor is a little abrasive. So there you go. It like is. that's that's who I am on the on on YouTube. Yeah. There you go. It's fine. It yeah. works. Um yeah, I really wish you a lot of, yeah, I wish you a lot of success with your channel. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank and you. that you moved to Florida. You fast. too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, um if there's one more thing <laughs> that I could say. Yeah. I do have a Patreon page, which is just as low as two dollars a month, and you gain access to my uploads, but they're one week early. Um, oh, okay. And they have no ads, depending on the tier that you subscribe to. Uh, I turn the ads off on that copy of the video, so you get none of those. Um, they're uncensored. So oh, if, okay. you, if you like the abrasive content, then there you go. You can have it uncensored. Yeah. Um, and you get one extra video, actually, per week. So I upload three videos every other week right now. Um, yeah. I'm going to soon go back to every week. It's only because I'm working on other projects right now Yeah. Uh, and learning things. and all. That is the other thing. That is linked on my channel and in the description of every single one of my videos if you can't find it on the main page. so Okay, cool. And I'll be well. sure to put your channel channel below. Okay, thank so you. Yeah. Can find you. All right, yeah. cool. 